In this video, we're going to look at Switch for JavaScript. Hey guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com. And in this video, we're going to look at Switch for JavaScript. And Switch is a logic mechanism, very much like an if-else statement, but slightly different. So with a Switch, we have specific use cases. We call them cases. And you may have two cases, three cases, eight cases, 20 different cases that you're looking for very specific things. And if one of those cases gets hit, the switch gets activated. Sort of like an if-else statement, whereas if-else are just sort of broadly open-ended, switches are very specific and there's uses for them. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Journal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got a file I'm calling it switch.html. It's our basic starter code we've always got. And it says, you know, switch statements. And we've got some scripts here. So let's start out by creating a variable. And I'm just going to call this name. And I'm going to set it equal to John. Now, to create a switch statement, it's very much like an if else statement. We just call the switch keyword here and then pass in some thing, right? In this case, we want to test for name, right? Whatever your sort of conditional thing is, you pass it in there. So there we go. And then as always, we have brackets. Now inside of here is where the magic happens. Just like an if statement, instead of having if else blocks, we have cases. So let's say there's a case of uh, John. And what we're testing here for, we're basically saying, hey, does name equal John? And if it does, we want to do something. So what do we want to do? Well, let's just, you know, document dot get element by ID. And let's grab that demo element that we always play with up here. And let's change the dot inner HTML to, and I'm going to use the string template that we looked at in the last video. And I'm going to say, hello there. And then let's say name. I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can see it better. And there we go. So that's one case. Now we end each little block with the break keyword. And this basically says, hey, stop, stop right there. You're good to go. And I misspelled document. Doc, you meant, there we go. <laughs> right. And that's all there is to it. Now, to fill this out, you just continue on with as many cases as you want. So uh, if we want a case for Bob, right? Let me just copy this whole thing again. And I don't know, maybe we just kind of paste the same thing. We need another break. And then you just keep going down the list for all the different cases you want. Now, I, we only need two here. We could do 50 of them if we want, but they're the same every time. You always need a break. So then we also need, well, you don't necessarily need, but you're going to want something called a default. And the default is sort of well, what it sounds like, it's the default case. So if none of these cases are met, then it's sort of like the else statement in an if else statement. So let me copy this and paste it in. And instead of saying hello there name, let's say hello there friend, whatever, right? And we also need our semicolons here. I'm always forgetting that with JavaScript. And there we go. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Head over to our terminal. And I'm in my C slash JS JavaScript directory. And now we just want switch.html. So I'll click on that and it says, hello there, John. Now that's not that interesting because we already know it's John, but if you change this to Bob, for instance, and hit reload, it would say, hello there, Bob. If you change this to Mary or, you know, anything else. Well, now it says, hello there, friend, because Mary is not either John or Bob. So we get the default case. Super easy, but also super useful. Now, keep in mind, this is case sensitive. So uh, if John is lowercase, we come back over here, hit reload. It still says, hello there, friend, because lowercase John and capital John are not the same thing. Change this back to capital J and, and John. Hit reload, now it says, hello there, John. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, you don't necessarily need a default, but you're gonna want one. And these breaks, like I said, well, they do what they seem to do. They break out of here. So what you're doing is you're starting at the top. You're saying, hey, is this case valid? Is it true? Does it exist? If so, do whatever's in here and then stop, break. Don't continue on to Bob. Well, if this isn't true, then this isn't going to get called and we'll drop back down to the next one, this next case, which is Bob. If you know this equals Bob, 
this will get executed and then we'll break and it won't continue down. So break is super important. If we took out the break, nothing would really happen because this is still John, but you get the idea. Super simple. And that's really all there is to it. So when would you use a switch versus a regular if else statement? Well, it really just depends. In all my years, I can only really ever kind of remember maybe one time that I used a switch and I didn't really need to. You can usually get by with a regular if else statement, but there are certainly circumstances where you may need a switch. If you have very specific cases you want to test against, uh, the switch is great and just very similar to the if else statement. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. That's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 190,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.